Resource management is difficult at the best of times. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to manage resources inside of monday.com. So you can see how your team are getting on, what their workload looks like and everything else. So as you can see here, I'm in an example monday.com system and I've got two different boards here. I've got board number one and I have board number two. Now on each board, there are a number of different items and different people have been assigned these different items. Now we then have a status so we can see the status of each item and we have a date which is the due date for each of these items. Now as you can see this is very hypothetical and I'm sure your work management or the, the data you're tracking, the tasks that you're tracking is going to look very different but I hope you get the idea. The three key pieces of information are essentially person, status and date. And I will come on to rating later as it's going to be important, but this is not the be all and end all. But those, as long as you've got these three columns on any board, we can manage resources or work management. So I've got this set up on board number one. And as you can see on board number two, they practically look the same. I've just changed the allocation from person to person and the date column has changed just for the sake of this video. So to manage workload, what we need to do is go to the plus button up the top here to add an item to a workspace and we want to create a new dashboard. So go ahead and select new dashboard and I'm going to call this workload management there we go and you can select whether you'd like it to be available for everyone to see or private so only select people can see it and once you're happy go ahead and press create dashboard now what we then need to do is go ahead and link all of the boards that we would like to manage workload from to this uh, to this dashboard. So in the example of this video, it's just gonna be board number two and board number one, um, but you can go ahead and add more in the future and I can change this accordingly. But once I'm happy, go ahead and press the done button. And we've now associated board number one, board number two with our dashboard for our workload management. So one step in the right direction. From here, we need to go ahead and add a widget. So press add widget in the top left-hand corner here and you're going to want to go to more widgets and then scroll all the way down and we are looking for workload this option here if you're unable to find it just search workload and select add widget so this should dock and take up the entire dashboard view as you can see here that's exactly what it's done now we can see some names we can see some blips and blobs and funny looking things and we can see some weeks now I'm going to show you how to set this up so you can see exactly what the workload is on a team member basis, on a board basis, whatever, um, and get this working as you need it to. So the first thing we need to do is go to the cog in the menu bar up here. Select the settings option. Now the first thing we're going to do in the settings area is define our column by time. So what is our date column? So obviously we only have one date column on each board and it's literally called date column. So I'm just going to select date and this would be all at once. The difference between all at once and one by one is different boards. So on a on one board in your instance, you may have six different date columns, but only one of those dictates the due date for that particular task. So if you use the drop down menu, you may see, see those six different date columns. Just make sure you select the right one. In this instance, I'm just going to go all at once. Now, date column obviously dictates by week, by month, etc., as as the visual on the timeline view here. So once you have your time column selected, I'm select date. We then want to go ahead and move over to resource type. Now, same principle applies. We've got all at once or one by one, but we need to define the resource. So what actually is a resource? We've got a few different options here. So if I use the drop down menu, you can see a board can be a resource. A group can be a resource, a person can be a resource, and a status can be a resource. So what is meant by that? To give you an example, a board may be a project, okay? And we want to see the resource allocation on a project by project basis, not a person by person, just project by project. So in that instance, we would select the board option. Same principle applies for group and same principle applies for status as well. So the status of open tasks dictates workload however in most instances i personally think that the person status so what the workload is looking like on an individual team member basis um, is the best way of looking at things personally so that's what i would select i would select the person option now again if you need to do it one by one on a board by board basis maybe you have multiple person columns per board then just make sure you've selected the the right one which dictates the workload but again all at once works very well for me so once we've selected our resource type um, just to give you an idea actually before we move on if i change this to board you can see that the resource type changes from board from names to actually board one and board two but i'm then going to move back to person for the sake of this video it's the most comprehensive tracking available in monday.com from here we have effort and capacity okay so measure effort by 
We can count items if we would like to. So if we would like to measure the amount of effort by the number of items assigned by to each person, then we can do. So we can go ahead and say default max amount of items a person can be assigned per week, let's say is one. I'll then go ahead and enter that information in. As you can see here on week 14, I have the perfect allocation amount. On week 15, both myself and Molly are over allocated workload. On week 16, um, I've got the perfect amount of allocation. Molly has not been allocated anything and you can see the trend continues. Now, if I were to change the default max amount to two, then that will update and you can see here that I am under allocated. Molly is optimal allocation for week 15 and then you can see the by the actual visual <laughs> who's got allocation okay now if i want to take this a step further and go edit capacity on a person by person basis or team basis i can do as well so i can unselect this apply default max capacity to everyone and let's say that i can allocate myself two um two items per week however molly maybe because she's part-time or just the, her work type so what she does within the organization uh means that she can actually only be allocated one task per week so we can go ahead and set this as a dynamic capacity and press the done button so now i'm optimal on two as you can see here because we've said that i can take on two items per week however molly on week 15 is actually over allocated so we could go ahead and change the allocation or manage resources accordingly now that's just count items that's the easy stuff we also have effort so if i select the effort option we're going to get loads of different options here now let me walk you through this so workload now becomes based on hours or points or something else now this is where i refer back to what i discussed earlier regarding our rating column okay now this is the easiest way for me to describe or give you an example of what this means or how this would work so we've got a ratings column and if i go to effort and capacity and effort workload is based on hours points etc and then i need to allocate the column that defines the workload. So it's not items, it's now a specific column. Now in this instance, we have the rating option. Again, you can do it all at once or one by one, but I only have a rating column, one rating column on each board. So I can go ahead and select that as an option. Now do bear in mind that this is the easiest way to manage resource allocation using the rating column. We could get hyper complex and I won't be covering that in this video, but we could do formula columns. We could do a combination of various columns. We can get very sophisticated. I think the most sophisticated would be using formula and we can do a rating based on answers or information from other columns within that particular item. We could then score that item and score it based on the actual workload. Um, based on the answers given on those columns um, and then it would work out what the workload looks like per team member or per board or whatever that resource is so that's hyper complicated okay and um, we're not going to be covering this but you could just use the rating column just like i've done here and that makes things quite easy so we've selected the rating column as which column defines our effort level. We then need to define how we divide this effort. So in a 10 effort project, Dan's effort will be five while Dana's is five, or we can do a sum. In a 10 effort project, Dan's effort will be 10 while Dana's is 10. So let me show you what that looks like. If I go to board number two here, you can see that myself and Molly are assigned to this. If I give this a five rating, that means that both that means if we split it that means i'll be assigned a rating of 2.5 and molly will be assigned a rating of 2.5 however if we do a sum we'll both be assigned a capacity of five each hopefully you get the idea there so if i go back to workload management and just go back to the settings again and go to effort and capacity i'm going to go ahead and split this so it's a 50 50 role we've both been assigned to it so it's five for molly five for myself and then we have capacity so this comes back to the capacity we just previously set up we can select the maximum amount of effort a person can be assigned defined by work schedule if you would like to i strongly suggest not using this approach i would then go to custom custom being we can then edit capacity per person slash team exactly how we did before but because we're using the rating column or however you want to set this up using the effort and capacity tracking we need to make some changes so you can see here i'm over allocated because i've got four items assigned to me here three here four for molly uh, molly's not got any here and so on and so forth so what i'm going to do is edit the capacity and say i can be assigned four per week molly can be assigned three per week and press the done button and you can see how the allocation changes um, you can see what's available what's not available 
uh, hopefully you start to get the idea now we can make changes to all of this we can have a default value for everyone or you can have it on a team member by team member basis depending on what you know they'll be doing for the completion of these various projects whether it be client fulfillment etc etc so once you've got your capacity set up we can then move on to further settings so we can go view settings and we can present workload as a number or as a percentage. So I actually prefer a visual percentage. So you can see 133% over allocated on week 17, Molly is. I'm 100%, um, I'm underutilized on week 15 because it's only 50% uh, and so on and so forth. Now we can have this as a number if we want, so just two or percentage, like I said, I prefer percentage. And then we can split team's effort between members. If you want to, you can have that unticked or ticked. Now moving on from here, we can color by, so we can choose what everything is colored by. So whether it be board, or whether it be group or whether it be per person, you can see here that that changes down here. Now, moving on to color by, we can color by anything. So we don't have to color. We have no value defined down here, or we can color by board, group, person, or status. It doesn't really matter for this, to be honest with you. Um, moving on from color by, we've got fiscal, fiscal year start month. So it could be January, February, March. That is going to dictate week 14, 15, 16. So if I change this to, let's say, March, you can see how that changes accordingly. But let's say our fiscal year starts in January. Moving on from there, we have boards. So obviously both of the boards that we connected to workload management are present and actively inputting data into our workload management widget. However, if I want to unselect board number one, that would change the display because board number one information is not being pushed over to workload management. So you can see a significant reduction in workload across the two users here. So myself and Molly, if I add board number one back, you can see things change again. You may have a board that is not relevant for this, so you can unselect it if you like. Um, moving on from boards, we have groups. Now, groups are very important for you to consider. The reason being groups dictate visibility of workload. So what I would strongly, strongly recommend you do is on every single board that you are using to manage workload, you have a group called completed items or done, or whatever you want to do. Done, finished tasks, job done. You can call it whatever you like. But every time the status is changed to done, item moves to group done. The reason being is we can untick that group from our view, which means you can you will only see the workload that needs to be done. However, if you do have your date column set up correctly, there shouldn't be as much of a problem. And then finally, we have customized column matching. I won't be covering that in this video as it's not particularly relevant. So once we are happy, we have got our workload management set up. We have got our allocation of resource. We can see what our resource allocation on a team member by team member basis is. I can click into this. I can see what's going on. It gives me a nice little view. Um, and this is how you would begin to manage workload inside of monday.com. Hopefully this has given you enough information to get started. If you need any help setting up monday.com for your business, check out the link below. We would be delighted to help. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you and goodbye.